This is a video about a train. But on a deeper level, it's a video about how we as humans think about technology in any given field. Computers, medicine, travel. There inevitably comes a time when a promising new technology emerges. And some people think, let's go all in on the new technology. And other people think, no, that's not a good idea. We need to just invest in what works and make it the best it can possibly be. Sometimes people are right about the new technology. For example, we don't use slide rules anymore. We use calculators. But sometimes people are right about the old technology. Seven years after it was making headlines, we're still not wearing Google glasses. Today, we're going to look at an example of when people thought doubling down on the existing technology was the right thing to do. And it very much wasn't. Do you think we made a mistake by transitioning from steam to diesel? No, no, it just had to be. It's just one of them things that had to be. So now I'm here at the Red Caboose Motel and I actually ran into a fan. This is Hunter from Amtrak Acela Productions. Be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. This is Norfolk and Western, J1 class, number 611. This particular J1 class locomotive was built in 1950. It ran peak passenger trains such as the Pocahontas from Virginia to Ohio, it could run up to 79 miles per hour and haul more than an Amtrak P-42 Genesis. Oh, there's a train. Well, the engineer on this one is really happy, like, wow, there's actually people watching our train! Riding the popularity. Do you think railroads made a mistake switching from steam to diesel? Well, that's a good question. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure they had a good reason for it, but I think that the steam has a more character. But I'm sure there's a practical reason why they switch. I don't know what it is, but um, I really enjoyed steam locomotives for that very reason, because it has character. Less than 10 years after 611 was built, the entire J1 class had been scrapped, except for 611. For comparison, GG1s, like the one behind this AEM7, were built 16 years prior to 611, and they ran into the 1980s. And the first Bud RDC railcars, like this one, were built one year prior to 611, and they are still running. You see, it was the 1950s, and railroads were quickly transitioning to diesel-electric locomotives. 611 was the result of over a hundred years of steam locomotive development, but it couldn't outcompete the new technology. This locomotive could be pulling Amtrak trains today. It has the same specifications as what Amtrak uses, but it's just not that efficient compared to a diesel electric locomotive. And after all the engineering that went into it, it's pulling excursion trains on the Strasbourg Railroad. Sometimes people read technology right, and sometimes they read it so spectacularly wrong that it creates an icon, but not much else. But here's another thing about humans. Not everything we make has to be practical. Sometimes we make stuff that's just awesome, even if it doesn't really make sense or if it makes sense at the time and doesn't end up making sense later, it's still pretty cool. Slip. Take it 611 degrees with me. So without further ado, let's go for a ride and enjoy this somewhat impractical but amazing piece of machinery. I, I think it's just so cool that they brought the 611 here. And here it comes now. Yep. It's one of the only remaining streamlined steam engines still in use. I 
I actually have an HO model. One day I'll get the Lionel one, but um, for now I have the HO model of the 611. Open air train car because ventilation, even though almost nobody else here is wearing a mask. Here we go. Look upon the mountain, waiting on a train. Maybe I know it long, and it still happened again. Waiting on my destiny. Okay, one downside of the open air car is all this smoke going straight from the engine up there directly into the car also my arm is kind of covered with soot yay good thing I'm wearing a KN95 look upon the can go up to 110 miles an hour. We're going about 30. Someday, Ferrari or Ford or one of those other car manufacturers, not a huge car guy, will come up with the best sports car ever made. And for decades, people will sing its praises and buy models of it and try to spot one in the wild. But none of them will actually be used or bought because everyone will be using self-driving cars. And these drivable sports cars will, I mean, they'll be the stuff of legend, but never really the stuff of life. And that's just kind of how technology can be sometimes. Always changing and it's always phasing things out. And you never know when the next time that will happen will be. Perhaps there's technology in our lives right now that in a couple decades we'll see the last and best version of 
and then it'll quickly disappear.